Will you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, President Clements. Here. Vice President Valentine. Here. Trustee Hedlund. Here. Trustee Clemenson. Here. Trustee McNow. Here. So I don't believe we have any changes to the agenda. So the recommended action to approve the agenda, please. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the agenda as written. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, so the next meeting of the Haldane Board of Education is a workshop meeting. Actually, first I should welcome people. Welcome to tonight's <laughs> meeting. <laughs> We're jumping to the future. Um, our next meeting will be a workshop meeting. It's scheduled for a week from today to accommodate the um, Thanksgiving holiday the following week. Um, so it's scheduled for November 14th, 2023 at 7 p.m. here in the Middle School High School Library. Um, and the topic is going to be the high school um, and athletics visit summary and detail report. And in fact, Maggie and I are starting this week what we hope to be a new practice of having school board members um, visit each of the schools about a week or so before the building report um, to really get a, 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 a more direct uh, view of what's going on instead of just hearing. So Maggie and I, I think, are both very excited about Thursday. Um, and just really briefly, I want to thank Dr. Bonante for going with me last night to the regional dinner for school board members and administrators. It was at um, uh, Tilly Foster Farm, mm -hmm. is that right? And um, it's a collaborative effort of the Putnam Westchester School Board Association, the Duchess School Board Association, and the Rockland School Board Association. And it was I got to meet uh, some of Dr. Bonante's colleagues. I saw Brian Alm, which was really delightful. Um, and then we heard a presentation on performance-based assessment. I think this was intended to be in part sort of like anticipating uh, the Regents meeting on Monday where they're going to announce uh, some plans for changing high school graduation requirements in New York State. Um, the presentation was interesting, but really what was most gratifying for me was to really recognize the work that our own teachers have been doing that we've learned about as we've learned about the curriculum development processes that our teachers are doing really reflected some of the practices that were being talked about in terms of really providing students with opportunities to be really with opportunities to be really actively engaged in their learning to direct their learning and to really demonstrate their learning um, in in a lot of interesting and diverse ways without a strong reliance on um, on standardized assessment so that was that was it was a nice evening so that's that's it for me thank you Peggy uh, it was a great evening I, I really enjoyed our time together and just I'll, I'll add um, what if I know these uh, events come up on particular dates uh, on occasion but it's a, a really nice event if uh, board members are able to attend uh, it's a great opportunity to connect with other board members uh, usually you're sitting with a couple of other districts at your table and and then there's a presentation on a topic that's relevant or timely uh, to the work that we're all engaging in and uh, just one note the uh, we had the opportunity to hear from a couple of practitioners who uh, work at a school or schools uh, in uh, primarily New York City um, and are part of the New York Performance Standards Consortium which centers uh, student um, uh, learning experiences around uh, inquiry-based uh, designs um, and, and assessments uh, that are aligned with that so in lieu of at these schools in lieu of taking the regents exams uh, you're part of the consortium so there are no regents exams and uh, that's part of uh, the engagement process with the consortium that these are accepted uh, assessments uh, in lieu of regents exams and as Peggy alluded to uh, the New York State um, regents are interested in exploring alternative models or pathways uh, for graduation and uh, which may include 
include students engaging in uh, such uh, classes and design in lieu of taking a traditional regents level course. Uh, and I also noted that at one of the schools, uh, there's no AP exams either. Um, and uh, I know the principal there was uh, very quick to point out that their students go on to very competitive and selective uh, uh, colleges and universities, and I'm sure go to all types of schools. I think I you know, really heard him say that, but um, it's a good opportunity to kind of step back and reflect. Sometimes we're so caught up in the way we've always done things, especially in New York, and uh, it was good to hear from some practitioners uh, who were examining different approaches with their kids um, at the secondary level, I'll say. Uh, these were high schools, yeah. and uh, I think there was a 6-8 uh, or 6-12 school represented there as well so uh, and again appreciated uh, the company it was a, a really worthwhile experience uh, we had superintendent's conference day today uh, as you know I just wanted to thank Josh and the rest of the administrative team and our faculty and staff uh, who are engaged in organizing uh, the day's agenda we had a heavy uh, emphasis on the NWEA uh, uh, and uh, everybody receiving training uh, from folks from NWEA on the assessments that we administer to our students routinely throughout the year uh, and how we could best utilize that information uh, to support student growth and uh, progress towards uh, the learning standards Deputy Tolvi also played an active role uh, in organized staff safety trainings, uh, both for the faculty and staff and also for our aides and TAs uh, as well. So I wanted to thank Deputy Tolvi for his efforts with that. Uh, and just two other notes from me. Uh, Dia de los Muertos was last week. Uh, great event uh, that was facilitated by the PTA's EDI committee. Had the opportunity to attend a traditional uh, Mexican festival uh, and remember loved ones who have passed. And uh, there was great uh, face painting and foods and uh, mariachi band, uh, arts and crafts, and uh, really well organized and well attended by our students. And just a reminder for the board that the blue ribbon recognition is at the high school this Thursday at 145. I know Peggy plans to attend on behalf of the board but if any other board members John you'll be there as well great oh John okay so if any other board members would like to attend uh, you're you're all welcome I know uh, some have the ability to but not all uh, but Thursday at 145 so I look forward to seeing Sean John and Peggy there that concludes my remarks great thank you um, so we're actually at the first communication from the public um, section of the agenda, so the Haldane Board of Education desires and values input from the entire school community. This first public comment session is reserved for comments on any special presentations or active agenda items. For those who wish to address the board, please sign in and state your name for the record. Please keep your remarks to three minutes or less. Disparaging remarks and discussion of district personnel are strongly discouraged. And although we do not engage in dialogue, please know that we're listening. We ask that you leave your contact information with our district clerk, Megan Shields, for prompt follow-up from either me or Dr. Benante. All right. So next uh, on the agenda uh, is information reports, right, for the past uh, period for our review and for us to act on um, next time and then we'll move into the consent agenda so consent agenda minutes um may i have a motion please so moved second all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed all right next are committee minutes They're pretty self-explanatory um the minutes from our last policy committee meeting and we'll be acting on a couple of those policies later on some really minor uh wording language um and then we'll just as you'll see, we're meeting again in December to keep moving forward with that work. And then there are the minutes from the Wellness Committee. I don't know. Oh, actually, you were at that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Anything you think we should? No, they're that just not getting there. everything set up for their sub subcommittees. They had another meeting, um, you know, shortly after. Uh, again, just to go into their little subcommittees great. and just work out well. Actually. Excellent. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Well organized. Oh, good. That's important. Um, so moving into consent agenda financial, um, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. 
comment? Yes, please. Just one item I wanted to draw the board's attention to is item eight, which is the approval to ratify the girls' ice hockey uh, sports merger, which is new uh, for us. And uh, I was talking to Mr. Cunningham about this. We do have a student uh, who's interested in uh, participating. And uh, girls' ice hockey is something that's growing. So uh, the merger is actually quite expansive. It's for the region uh, okay. for there to be one varsity team uh, really representing, I think, a dozen school districts that will be based out of Brewster. Uh, and we have a, a student athlete who uh, would like to participate. So um, I think something we'll see more of in the future as girls ice hockey expands. Oh well, yeah, you got a family in the elementary school. Yep. Yeah. Fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. It's all right. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Consent agenda personnel. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Is there anything you want to comment on, Dr. Benante? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And moving into unfinished business, uh, starting with a discussion of the campus master plan. Just a few uh, notes for the board, and if there's discussion, I uh, certainly welcome that. That uh, today, an overview. Uh, was provided to families uh, about where we're at in the campus planning process. Uh, that went out via email uh, this afternoon. In addition to that, we have ads in both local papers just drawing the community's attention to a forum on Monday night, uh, which will be here. We will have representatives from CS Arch uh, available as well. I think both Tom and Melissa will, will be at that um, uh, forum with me. And then uh, strategic reach outs, I'll say, will begin in the weeks thereafter. And I know a few board members have uh, sent me names of individuals who they think would be just good points of contact as we're continuing to discuss uh, the plan and uh, where we're at with this. Uh, so I plan to begin reaching out to those folks uh, after Monday's uh, event uh, to come in and meet with me either individually or in small groups uh, to further discuss where we are in uh, the process. Um, uh, as far as our focus, just in summary from our last meeting, I, uh, on Monday night I plan to um, provide an overview of the summary of engagements that we've had starting back obviously 18 months ago with the survey and the campus plan committee and there were some other engagements as well. We had focus groups and whatnot. How projects one through three are organized, the key uh, elements of, uh, in those projects, uh, as well as the respective uh, timeline that those projects are on. Again, that's, those are estimated timelines, obviously subject to change. Uh, the rationale for why the projects were organized in this way, uh, part of that will be me, part of that will be CS Arch, uh, just explaining why do we see these things in project one, these other things in project two and project three, as an example. Uh, and then an overview of project one will be provided, uh, as well as the cost analysis or summary, and then a Q&A. Uh, I would expect my and Melissa and Tom's overview to be about 15 minutes. I, I, I don't expect to go into great detail. Uh, I really think after that, the, it should be driven more by the questions uh, that folks have who are attending that, um, uh, attending the forum. You should have a major question, which is what <laughs> was going to be the agenda for Monday. Um, are, are you, have you engaged like the PTA or HSF to rouse people out not uh formally yet okay. Okay. Uh, but that's something that in the weeks ahead depending on again the turnout yeah. we have on monday yeah uh, i'm kind of curious to see what turnout we yeah. get yeah um, those folks would be included in the strategic uh, sure reach outs that so we i was more specifically to oh, get, promote to, the event yeah yeah, Got yeah, it. yeah um cool i guess one of the things i want to make sure is emphasized in those meetings is that yes there is this campus master plan that includes these multiple phases but that it was made explicit by cs arch and it is my explicit understanding and intent that the extent to which phase projects two and three happen and what they look like re are, are really yeah. up for I mean, dis, 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 discussion, and it's it's one of the things that I think is confusing to the public, and I understand why, which is that this campus master plan reflects all these community engagement, you know, events and all of this input. But at this point, 
in my mind, two and three are very, I'm going to say even hypothetical, right? Like not that they don't include things that people have indicated are important, but that they are really down the road and what we even perceive, I mean, I remember explicitly CSR talking about like what the community ends up even really perceiving as being necessary once project one is sort of up and running may really change. And so I'm hoping, and I, I expect you plan to, to do this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm really hoping that we make really clear that, that, that yes, there are these other phases, but the project one is what we're really focused mm -hmm. on right now, that the board does not have these grand designs to like do all these, these other things. So. I, I believe that'll be clear on Monday yeah. in any uh, <laughs> subsequent meeting that we have. And I would just go back, though, um, within that, because um, I can understand why a community member would just see the three projects and feel, well, the board's adopted the plan, so they've already yeah. committed to the I scope of those three projects. And yeah. that's not necessarily right. uh, true. But uh, that being said, it does reflect a long-term vision for how our campus could be designed to meet mm -hmm. uh, a variety of not only needs, but desires for, um, uh, for things that our students will have access to. So um, I understand the reservation um, about looking at all of it right now across you know 10 years potentially um, and, and on paper. Uh, but uh, I also just wanna be sure to honor the fact that we did hear a lot of feedback um, uh, related to certain things being included uh, in the plan. Uh, things like an auditorium or thinking about how we could best utilize our field space. Um, and uh, that's why it's there. Right. Um, but the board has not yet committed to taking that project on. That will come in time. Awesome. Hopefully um, in time, that will come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's out there. Um, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask this, I'm gonna assume this is part of the, the, the timeline part of the mm -hmm. conversation on Monday night. We've had some really good conversations and you've, you've brought up uh, things that you've talked to, maybe CSRCH, maybe other in, uh, districts that have been through similar processes right. about uh, not only like 2024 to 2027, 2029 to 2032, but between now and vote, mm -hmm. and between vote and right. execute, like, do you, do you or do you not get a consultant on to shepherd you through the process of actually choosing an architecture firm? Do we want to go with CSRCH? Like, there's a couple of other things that I think we've talked about previously yes. that I assume is going to be yes. okay great good thank you <laughs> no, I'm sorry I didn't reference no no that, that's okay I, uh, and I, I think you're just to, for clarity referring back to that once the board determines the the scope of the project that mm -hmm. it wants to present to the community <clears throat> my recommendation was that at that point we bring in a construction uh, mm -hmm. manager mm -hmm. uh, and that individual would work with whatever architect firm yeah. we move forward with uh, to determine and, and really uh, narrow uh, in selecting, uh, I should say refining the estimates that we have, uh, which CSRH will acknowledge are rough estimates, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but there's a greater level of detail that now then goes into the planning when you're actually organizing project to put to vote, which could influence the cost one right. way or the other. Right. Uh, CSRH, as you may recall, um, went with somewhat of a middle of the road standard in their estimates and if we're interested in you know cost savings there's they, they can uh, or whatever architect engineering firm can work with a construction manager uh to determine how we could you know value engineer certain parts of the project if that's uh necessary or it's just a year later and cost may have shifted uh one way or the other so that's something a construction manager will work with uh, the administration, um, at times the board, uh, but also the architect engineering firm and the designs of those spaces. But there's other milestones as well uh, that we would point to. And so I did not get that email, I think because I'm not a parent. I don't know. Did you get it? Oh, it. well, you're a parent. But I got it through my well, through board Through your email. board email. You should have gotten it in your board email. It went to spam. I, I did. I, sorry. Apologies. I was right there, and I did not. I did not. I did not recognize it for some reason. Yeah. Excellent. And so it's going to be in the auditorium at 6 p.m. Monday. Great. 
Um, Are you putting good. a stake in the ground to, to uh, bond vote t vote timing? I, I would roughly yeah. uh, <laughs> stake. It's uh, loosely uh, in the ground, <laughs> right? not cement, but in I think some at sort this point dirt. we're looking at the fall. Of, okay, uh, and. Generally, November is a good time okay. in the fall as okay. compared to September or October. Yeah. Uh, just because folks are oriented towards voting. Voting, you yeah. Know, things in November. Okay. And it tends to just be, you know, again, you've come out of the, um, uh, the busyness of the beginning of the school year. Uh -huh. and, you know, you, it gives you a couple of months also to okay. use uh, to uh, promote and, uh, the project and yeah. uh, get out the vote, if you will, okay. which takes a little bit of time. And okay. does it necessarily have to? be aligned with the federal and state elections? It doesn't. Oh, okay. No, we can pick any date. Okay. In fact, I think, didn't Garrison just have a vote yesterday? Two days? Some weird they, on their bus route, right? I'm sorry, I think that's in December. Oh, December, but it's yeah. December 5th. They December. are. They're looking to, they're, yeah, they're actually doing some work that we'll probably end up doing later this school year. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Respect> <laughs> a little to, preview. <laughs> uh, they're doing some bus route, uh, yeah. making some bus de busing decisions. Uh, and I, I think they framed it very much as cleanup work because yeah. they were practicing something that the board should have resolved uh, to do okay. uh, at some point, and they didn't have a record of that, That's a, as I understand it. Okay. Um, have we thought about average, because this is not that far away, to, to get the word out widely? Have, is it too late to put an article, I mean, an advertisement in the paper? Is it, it is. Both are in. Did you yeah. say? This it week. should be in this week's PCNR okay. and this the current. This week it will be in the paper. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. And, and if you said that, I apologize for missing it. Okay. Sorry. It will be on social media. And all the, our partner groups Excellent. are very good about re oh, good. reposting when sense. we post things. And Good. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, great. Um, so the Good. next, <laughs> sorry, I've got to get back to the agenda. Um, so the next is information about our Board of Ed meetings and workshops. I think there's a change in the schedule here. Yes, we just moved a couple of uh, dates around given uh, the availability of our administrators. As you know, Ms., uh, I think Ms. Jammon was originally scheduled to present in November. She's currently out uh, doing well, uh, but recovering. Uh, so Julia and Tom will present at our next meeting, as you noted. Uh, thank you to Peggy and Maggie. Uh, for coming in for the visit uh, that's attached to that presentation uh, later this week. And then we have the curriculum and instruction report along with the state assessment report in December. There was also a delay uh, that was influencing that with respect to the reports that the state typically provides us uh, on the state assessments. They hadn't been released yet um, in a manner that um, Josh could work with readily. So uh, we'll be fine for December with that. And then we'll go into the middle and elementary reports on the uh, after the new year. Right. And so related to the school report, so I sort of polled in the various mem board members about who wants to attend what. And I don't remember if I shared this with Megan or not, but yeah. just to confirm with oh, everybody, great. right, so that um, the week of January 8th will be the visit to the middle school, and Sean and Maggie are going to do that visit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the week of February 12th will be the visit to the elementary school. And John and I right. will do that. And then Ezra also has the option if his schedule allows and wants to join either one of them. I think we would work to accommodate Thank you. that. All right. Um, so now going into new business. Um, so the CSC CPSC recommendations. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the recommendations of the Committees on Special Education and Preschool Special Education as presented. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, and so the next is for the acceptance of request for proposal for professional audiovisual vis services. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, be, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby accepts the October 5th, 2023 proposal submitted by Damian W. McDonald, LLC, to provide professional audiovisual support services 
retroactively to November 1st, 2023, to the district in accordance with the terms set forth in the district's request for proposal for such services and Damien W. McDonald LLC's proposal, copies of which are incorporated by reference in the minutes of this meeting. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, yes, please. Uh, approximately two years ago, our administrative team um, got together and really examined what was an ongoing issue uh, with us having adequate audiovisual support um, for a variety of events throughout the school year. Um, in the past, it was a stipended teaching, uh, stipended position, but uh, that didn't really accommodate our needs in the evening hours. Um, and then even during the day, there could be things that came up that presented obstacles for the teacher who was receiving the stipend because they were teaching. Um, so uh, we outlined a, a host of uh, events that we uh, are somewhat recurring that we need support for and we need a level of expertise to just help us managing everything from setups for superintendents conference days to the play uh, and i would say everything in between <laughs> um, so uh, this took a bit of time uh, the board supported this by way of budgeting an amount uh, in actually last school year's budget and, and that carried over into this school year's budget but we had to go through uh, the RFP process so we had to develop the RFP uh, we had to vet that uh, post it for a period of time and then uh, solicit obviously any inquiries there um, uh, we received those uh, we reviewed those and um, we're and that comes with now Damien's recommendation or Damien W. McDonald LLC <laughs> as recommendation <laughs> to fulfill uh, those responsibilities. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So fortunate to have yes, we are. you. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Welcome. <laughs> just, I mean, just off the cuff from the people that my children have not been involved in the, in the technical side of performance, but uh, the number of people, the number of students who have and who have had just like great experiences with you is fantastic. So, l l yes, love it. This has happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. It's yeah. well a yeah. big tent. <laughs> I was also going to say something congratulatory, but I'm afraid you might invite me as well. So, <laughs> I'll say that for after the meeting. <laughs> All right. So, um, policy review. I recommend that. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the <coughs> Board of Education hereby waives the second readings and adopts the following Haldane Central School District policies as attached. 5660, meal charging and prohibition against meal shaming. 5676, privacy and security for student data and teacher and principal data. Uh, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All right. So the, the edits are really very straightforward. Any questions? So instead, of, we won't do a first and second reading because the changes are so minor. So um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. And so next, um, uh, yes. The external audit report for the 2022-2023 school year corrective action plan. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the board of education hereby approves the corrective action plan for the external audit report for the 2022-2023 school year. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Is there anything you want to? Just would uh, remind the board that uh, we are permitted to carry up to four percent of unassigned fund balance in our budget, and through the audit, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we had four point zero eight percent. So the corrective action plan um, is one tenth of one percent. Yes, suggests oh. the corrective how we're going to correct that moving forward. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So now we're at the second communication public uh, communication from the public section of the meeting. If anybody would like to make any comments, no. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any board reflections? 
I do have a reflection. I have a thought and a question. And maybe this ends up being like new business. But I was at the, um, I know this, this came up originally last year. And somebody fantastic took up the mantle and ran with it. But it's for it was for um, handicap parking for big games, which I think uh, Tom Cunningham is now doing, that goes out and puts out. But what I was wondering was, and this is, this is where I'm going to go, like completely off into things that I have no knowledge of, is right in front of that. So you pull up to, you pull up to where the uh, scoreboard is, right? And you have the road down. And you have that one... Um, guardrail mm -hmm. right right in front of there is probably a fairly unimpeded view of mm -hmm. the field Correct. there's a couple of little scrub trees mm -hmm. like would it be possible to actually put in a paved mm -hmm. five yeah. foot wide thing yeah. that if you're in a walker in a wheelchair you could just put a little fence on and there's like 15 feet of place where people could come and sit so you're not mm -hmm. sitting in your car and mm -hmm. you're not like to, just a thought Oh, somebody noted. throw it out to somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. I'll uh, add to that. My uh, <clears throat> my father-in-law, of course, complained, uh, <laughs> as he is often to, uh, about the lack of uh, accessibility yeah. Yeah. during games, uh, during uh, all of the volleyball season for the uh, oh. modified volleyball season. He, every time he would roll in, he was like, why isn't there enough uh, – Handicap parking. Yes, I got you. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> well, so, parking and, I mean, I think general, it's the campus. Parking, I mean, one of the things that's going to come up on Monday is yeah. it's in the site work. It's really, I think <laughs> the public is going to really, like, I, I, I look forward for us having the opportunity to really communicate some of these really critically important pieces that are in hmm. Project One, you know, and increasing the accessibility of the campus is a, is a big piece of that. And it's, it's really important. Cool. It really is. Well timed to bring that up. Yeah. Any other? Um, I should say, I, I, I think this was, this happened after the last board meeting, but either way, I didn't share it, that I had participated as a chaperone in the uh, fifth grade um, Putnam BOCES sort of field trip, which is a, largely a team building and sort of planning exercise. And, um, you know, the, the one thing we were told not to do was to intervene and to allow the kids to solve the problems that were presented to them. And it was just really great to see kids that I've, you know, because that my son happens to be in the fifth grade, um, just that I've seen from kindergarten until now, see how their dynamics have developed and see how, really how they take care of each other. And like to see cohorts to cohort to cohort, just that folks are willing to lead, folks are willing to follow. And um, they just really worked. It was very inspiring to be in their presence. And it was a variety of different kinds of tasks, that some, some which were, you know, maybe if you were more athletically inclined, you, you would definitely be um, successful. Or if you were a little bit more, I don't know, contemplative, you could be successful. And everybody had an, an opportunity to shine. So and it was great to see the, um, you know, the sixth grade team really in action and also providing them with lots of space and time to solve problems on their own in a really instructive way. So I'm learning the fifth grade is about independence and turning that toward, you know, and that's definitely the direction that I saw them going in. So it was very encouraging. I think it's a great program. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Dr. Benanti? Nothing else to share. All right. Wow. That was quick. If you All right. Voted, go vote. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So um, I move to close the meeting. May I please have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.